Good evening, everyone. Hi. Uh, we all know how important internationalization is in open source communities, be it the documentations or the coding styles or anything. And how do we leverage crowdsourcing to do that? We have Lisa to speak about that. Over to Lisa. Let's welcome her with a huge applause. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, my name is Lisa C. Cataluca. I'm an IBMer, and I'm here to talk to you today about um, Cordova translation. Can you not hear me very well? Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah? Okay. Um, this is actually my first talk at a conference, so hopefully you guys are really nice to me. And I had a favor to ask. Could everyone move towards the, the middle of the aisle so it looks a little more crowded in here? Got to take some pictures for my management. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. So um, I started out participating in Apache Cordova. It was around May of last year. And like any new co um, contributor to an open source project, the best place to start helping out is documentation. So I started looking in the documentation. Um, I also looked at you know, test cases and some, some bugs that were open within our JIRA tracking area. And one thing that I noticed right away was the documentation is only available in English. And um, just to give you an idea, here's a map of the world and all of the registered developers that work on Cordova. And I mean, there's other countries that are speaking languages other than English. So I thought this was a good spot to really jump into Cordova and make a, a big difference right away. So I, I started um, looking at how the process worked today, today with Cordova, today meaning back in May. And um, for translation, basically the directions were, um, as a translator, you were to go in and copy a file and paste it into a, a directory with the, um, the, the initials for the other language that you wanted to use. And then you had to manually go in and, and change each word to be whatever the translated version was for your um, language that you wanted to help out with. So as you can imagine, most of the files were you know, sparsely translated. Half of them weren't complete. Um, most of them were out of date. So by the time you finished translating the file, um, the, the documentation had changed. So it seemed like a good opportunity to, to make a big difference. So I started looking into machine translation. I'm sure you've all uh, had experience with it um, in a personal life. You know, um, someone sends you a, a note from another country and you want to translate it into another language. But th there were some drawbacks to this um, in that a lot of our documentation had code in it. And um, if you were going to throw a bunch of information as input into one of these machine translations, they're going to output that code too, also translated. And, and that was just ugliness. So we, we're trying to think of a way to leverage our existing community. We have all these people that are already experts in Apache Cordova, and they, they know the context. They know about mobile development. They know about you know, all of the plugins and what they do and what it means to be a, a camera or a picture. In different languages, those words can be different things. So how do we leverage our community that already exists that these people already speak multiple languages to help do our translations. So in comes crowd translation. And it's exactly what it sounds like. Uh, basically, you leverage the community or a crowd, a group of people who can come together and help translate as much or as little as they want. So they can come in and say, oh, you know, I'll, I'll help translate a paragraph here, um, maybe a whole page there. And it really helps build a community and gets the experts helping to do the translation. But where, which tool do we use? There's tons of translation tools out there today. Just to give you an idea, um, this is from the, the angel list of startups around translation. And there's 98 companies that are listed and um, 813 investors. The average valuation was 3.5 million. So that's it's a big area. How do we pick between all these companies which one's going to fit our open source um, environment? So the big, big thing for us was pricing. I'm sure we could probably go for one of these pricing tiers, but who would pay for it? You know, I work for IBM. Would I go through my management and try to get IBM to, to pay for translation services? Uh, in a little more digging, I found that a lot of these crowd translation tools are free for open source and academic licenses. Okay, so now I have a sub list. I know of all of these available crowd translations, um, which one could we possibly use? Okay, these ones are the free ones. 
I'll look at those ones. So I did some more digging. And IBM um, does a lot of stuff with open source technologies. And one of our DEs over in OpenStack, Chris Barris, he recommended that I talk to another IBMer who leads the translation efforts for OpenStack. So I talked to her, and they were using TransFX. Um, it, it sounded like a good tool to use. She gave me a whole presentation about how they use it and all the things that, that they use TransFX for. So um, I started playing, and it was, it was a, a manual process. I uploaded the files um, from our Cordova documentation website, and I manually went in there and, and had to specify what the file types were. So TransFX didn't accept a markdown file type as um, the input into their documentation, and that's what the Cordova documentation is within. So instead of Markdown, I instead used either HTML or, or uh, text-based files. And that caused a lot of problems because you know, there weren't really opening and closing tags within our Markdown files. So instead of having individual pieces of, of documentation to do the translations, it was almost like giant chunks that were just unmanageable. Unman so with that in mind, I did some more searching. And I found this tool called Crowdin. And they supported the Markdown files. So, and they also match our criteria of being free for open source software. So um, I started playing there. And here we are, eight months later, um, and we're using Crowdin. And I've been really happy with it. It's been super easy to use. We have 76 participants within our project community. Uh, you can follow this URL right now if you want, crowdin.net slash project slash Cordova. And you can see how the tool works. And, and even help participate if you know in another language besides English. So some of our stats, we have 76 users. Um, there's 81 markdown files. Uh, those are our individual files for the documentation, both the main documentation and the plugin documentation. There are 10 primary languages. And by this, I mean um, those, the first two rows in this picture here, a uh, screenshot from the tool. Um, IBM has a distribution of Cordova called IBM Worklight, and we support those 10 languages in Worklight. So we wanted to align the Cordova documentation translation work with what Worklight was doing. So that's how we chose those first 10 primary languages. And then um, the next languages down below are nine additional languages, and those are languages that were proposed by people in the community. So they'd come to me or through the tool and say, hey, you know, I, I want to help translate Hebrew. And I said, OK. So we, so we add Hebrew to our list of available languages, and off they go. Um, if you look closely, too, on this slide, I don't know if you can see it, but underneath each language is a percentage of approved or translated. Uh, once, a, once a language gets to 100% translated, then um, Basically, you could have a set of approvers that can come in and make sure that all of the, the strings that have been translated are correct and you don't have malicious translations. And that's what approved means, that, that you have your administrators come in and say, this is, this is good or this isn't good. And then translated is just like it, like it seems, how, how much of all this documentation has been translated. So this is our flow. Can you see it OK? Looks like it's on this screen. On my screen, there's a big arrow. <laughs> it starts on the top. But um, basically, our, uh, our English documentation is entered into GitHub. So all of the Cordova documentation is on GitHub. And, um, and we have to go through this process every time we want to push out a new version of our translations. This is all documented, by the way, on our, our wiki, um, if you guys want more information. So the first step is to push our markdown files to crowdin.net. So crowdin has a number of um, helper functions, really, to, to help make it easier to move all of whatever it is that you want to translate over onto their system. So um, basically, I set up my own fork of our uh, master um, Cordova documentation, and I make sure that it's first up to date with the master. And then I open a JIRA issue with the branch that um, I'm going to define for this translation and, uh, and switch to that branch. Then I use some Crowdin um, CLI tools. Uh, basically, it's a jar file that you have to include into a directory. And then there's this YAML file that defines your project. So in our case, our project identifier is Cordova. 
And uh, the API key, as an administrator of the crowd and tool, I have access to that API key, but you just put that in there. And then the, the base path. So this is gonna be the working directory where you're gonna run the, your scripts from on your local machine in order to do the push of the files. And then we define the files ourselves. So in, um, in this case, all of our files, we're gonna look under the docs directory, make sure we're under the English path, because that's, that's what we're seeding with the English language. Our edge directory, we're gonna grab all of the subdirectories there and all of the markdown files. And then for translation, the result is gonna be the two letter code of whatever that language is, and then the same path pretty much of the, the markdown file. So this is really hard to read, but you don't need to see all the nitty gritty of our script. But basically, um, this script does a curl command to pull um, from Crowden and determine which of our languages are completely translated and which aren't. So this, this green thing here is the result of, of the curl command. So you can see we have French here, there's 6,000 words, um, 6,000 have been translated, so we're at 100%. You can see all the other languages and their information. So our script um, loops through all of the languages, checks to see which language has reached 100%, because we only want to pull in those translations that reached 100%. We don't want to have partial translations pushed to our documentation. It has to be um, full translations. And then once we get those files, uh, we push those back to my uh, forked repository. And finally, I'll do a, pull, uh, a push to the, the main Apache Cordova um, repository and do a pull, a pull request there. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Cordova, um, previous releases of Cordova, the, uh, the core APIs were bundled with the plugins. So it, we only had one spot where we were doing all of the documentation. Everything was under this Cordova docs git repository. And then in version 3.0, uh, we, we versioned out the platform and the plugins. So the core code is, is the main code and developers can pick and choose which plugins they want to include. So this is all goodness for developers. Makes it a little bit harder on me doing translation, but not too bad. Um, so now we have 18 different repositories within Git that we have to translate. And at first I was like, oh my god, what am I going to do? Because I didn't want to create 18 different crowd in translation projects because the people that were coming in to translate, I just didn't see them going into each individual um, project and helping to do translation that way. But I was able to come up with a solution that worked pretty good um, with a few minor updates. So here's the, our updated YAML file. Uh, so everything's the same up to this second source entry here. Uh, instead of just pulling in the Cordova docs markdown files, now we're going to pull in all the markdown files for each of the plugins. So that's all that's doing. And this is a screenshot of uh, the splash screen Cordova plugin um, repository just to give you an example. And you can see in this case there's a Spanish and French directory for those translated files. And then the, um, the script itself had to be minorly updated as well. I just declared a, a variable of strings for each of the each of the <laughs> Git repositories that we were going to pull the documentation from. So if we had to add a new one, we would just have to update this and throw in a new Git repository name, and it would pull in, in that to our scripts as well. And then we loop through each of those repositories um, as we go through the, the script. So it takes about, I'd say, seven minutes or so to run this, to run it live. So I figured I'd do a little recording faster here, just to show you guys. So um, I think I'm the only person who present today on a Windows machine. <laughs> and I have to run a, a Ubuntu image in order to do my, my documentation stuff. But that's OK. So as you can see here, um, it's going through and making sure all of the files are up to date, um, pushing from my fork to the Crowdin directory. Right here. So where it says skip, that means that the files were already up to date on Crowdin. So if someone were to come in and change some of the documentation, um, I would just run the script again, and only those pieces of the documentation that had changed would be pushed back into the tool to be uh, retranslated. That way you don't start from scratch, and you're not requiring those people that are helping translate to go in and, 
and um, you know, copy and paste things. So once that, that's complete, um, my script checks to see which of the languages reached 100%. And uh, I had to just print out which of those languages didn't reach 100%, just so it's easy for me to see when I'm running the script. And then it will download all of the translated versions of all these markdown files. So you can see it goes into each of the plugins, uh, in this case, plugin battery status, and it's getting the index MD file for each of these. And finally, the script's pushing those files back to my, my GitHub repository so I can do the pull request and get them back into the system. So um, there's still some more manual work that has to be done. You have to manually ignore some of the code. So when someone goes and adds new documentation into our system, it typically will have examples of how to use Cordova pieces, um, and it's written in code. And we don't want that to be translated. So it, as an administrator for the Crowdin system, I click on each of these code segments and then go over here and there's a little button to say do not translate. And this does a couple things. It makes it so that your translators, when they come in to help translate the documentation, they can't touch that, those pieces. They see a, a grayed out area so they don't need to worry about translating code pieces. Um, and also when you do machine translation, so the, the Crowd in translation allows you to do a hybrid approach. So you can have your translators come in and do the human translations, but if, if I got up to 90%, I still need to get to 100% in order to push that documentation live. So you can do machine translation as well. Um, in that case, by ignoring these code segments, you don't have the machines trying to do the translation for you. Okay, so now we have all of the files in our crowd and repository, and we need to tell our, our translators to come help. And there's a couple ways that, that we can do this. Through the crowd and tool, um, as an administrator, you can send a message to uh, your translators. So this just gives you an idea of, of who the translators are, um, what their role is, if they're active or not, and you can click a button to send them an email so you can say, hey, um, the documentation just changed for camera. Can you please come in and, and help translate if you have a second? Um, another thing the Cordova team in general likes to do is use Twitter. So I'll send out a tweet that says, you know, I'm looking for a few good translators, and people will come in and, and help us out that way as well. So um, <clears throat> to be a translator for for us, for Cordova, you just create a free account on Crowdin. Um, once you have your free account, you can search for the Crowdin project, pretty easy. Once you find the project, it will show you a picture of um, flags for all of the different languages, and you can click on the one that you're willing to help translate on. And then um, you'll be taken to a page that's dedicated to that language, and then next to each of the markdown files, you'll see a button labeled Translate. Um, and you can click on that button to help translate. So this is a little screenshot, and it shows that this file, images.md, is already 100% translated. But if I want to help translate, I would just click that Translate button. And then once you're in, so I, I click to, to help translate these icons and splash screens documentation. And once I'm in, there's some handy highlighting that the tool does. So it'll show up in, in green if it's already been translated. It'll show red if it hasn't been translated. So you can quickly scan through and see where you're needed and where you can help do the translations. Um, and you can see what other people have recommended as well. So here you can see that a couple people suggested different translations for this, this piece. And you can vote up or down somebody. If it's already translated, you don't need to do the translation anymore but you could do a vote of what you thought the best translation should be. Okay, so I already touched on this a little bit, but if a, a language isn't 100% translated, then um, it's not gonna be pushed into our documentation until it gets to 100%. So for us, we have those 10 primary languages that we wanna make sure are translated with each release, and if it's not up to 100%, then we're running it through the machine translation. So even though it's it's not as nice as if we had native speakers come in and do the translation. It's still better than pure 
machine translation because you're ignoring those code snippets and, and it's a little cleaner that way. So preferably we'd have people, more people help do it, but um, in some cases we are doing machine translation. But the tooling is pretty easy. You select all the files that you want to be translated over here on the right, and then you select which languages you want to be translated. And then you just click pre-translate. So this is all something our administrator is doing. It's not the end user has to touch this. It's just our um, project. And then there's two translators you can use in the tool, either the Microsoft Translator or Google Translate. And we're using Microsoft Translator right now. They have a plan that's two million characters a month that's free. So um, we haven't had an issue where we've gone over that two million characters a month. Um, so that seems to be working just fine for us. So now we have all this documentation that's translated. Now what do we do? So we have to do one more manual step of building the project within Crowdin itself. So this is, again, the administrator has to go into the Crowdin tool, and they just click this button to build a fresh package. And I've done this before in the past where I forgot to do this step, and I forgot to click build. And then when I run my script again, it fails to, to pull in the, the translations. I'm like, what? It's at 100%. Why isn't it pulling it in? It's because I didn't build fresh. OK, so now it's built. It's ready to be translated. Um, we run the script again. So I ran the script that I showed you guys before. And this time, the first time it ran, if um, it was pushing the files over to Crowdin. The second time that it's running through, since it's already at 100%, it's pulling those files back down and then pushing it to my, my forked GitHub repository. So we need to, to test the documentation. So once you got your language, um, I got all of them pulled in. Only those are 100%. So let's say it's just, just um, Russian in this example. So I would go into my Cordova docs and test the documentation. And this is just, in general, a, a good practice with any documentation changes within any open source project, really. Um, but for Cordova, we encourage the people that make changes to the documentation to, to do a build to see what the output looks like. And this is really important for translation, because as you can see on the bottom here, in this, this version that's been translated, um, there's a couple links that are broken. So the black ones are broken. And the reason for that is um, the headings were were not translated the same across pages. So um, that's some manual steps that we have to do because our translators don't know that they're going to break a link. So you have people coming in who are touching different files, and one person suggests something, another person adds a tilde somewhere else, and it doesn't match up. So it's just good to generate the documentation, see the broken links, and go in and fix those. OK, so then. Um, I edit the commit me message and make sure I'm on the correct branch that's checking in for translations. And I rerun that script file I told you about. And push, um, and then I push my fork to the Apache stream so that I can ask someone, you know, do a pull re request and bring all this in, um, build the documentation just like you would normally, but for each of these other languages. And then um, that's it. Then you can visit the documentation site, um, and there's a drop in on the right, drop down on the far right of our page that has not only the versions of Cordova, but also the, the different languages. So you can see, um, I think so far we only have those 10 primary languages showing up on the, the far right side, but um, it's there, better than nothing. Just a few other gotchas that I found with translation. Um, I showed you how with code sn snippets you could ignore uh, like groups of, of code. But if there's inline code, you can't do that. Uh, it doesn't, the tool doesn't let you pick and choose just single words and phrases to ignore. So um, it, it would be nice if we could encourage our people who are doing documentation to maybe you know, do a new line before they enter code and not have the code inline just because it's easier for translation purposes. And then I mentioned um, languages have to be at 100%. Um, this is specific to us. If your project didn't need to be at 100%, you could set that to another variable. And I also mentioned machine translation limitations. Um, we, at, when I was first testing around with this, we did go over that 2 million character limit, but that was mostly because I was playing around. I didn't really know what I was doing, and I was running it all the time. 
Um, but a piece of advice is, to, as the administrator, when there are changes to the documentation, you go in and you ignore those code snippets, and that way that code is not um, thrown through the machine translation service um, and, and doesn't use up some of your characters. And finally, for our scripts to work, um, I, at first, I, I did a Git clone of some of our repositories without doing SSH. I was doing HTTP. And then every time it went through each of the repositories, I had to enter my username and password. And that was slow. So cloning with SSH. Um, so yeah, that's it. We are still looking for translators. So if anyone speaks languages other than English, there's our project. Join it and, and help translate. Um, if you wanted to add translation to your open source project, it, it's really a pretty simple way of doing it. It didn't take much time at all for me to get up and, and running with it. I documented it on our wiki, so here's a link to our wiki. The scripts are all freely available, so if you use Crowdin, you can download that jar file. Um, I have the, the YAML file and the script file that I run, which I can share with you, and it's also on our wiki. Or you can just email me. So uh, that's it. I wanted to mention our hackathon tomorrow. So I know you guys have heard a lot of this today. But uh, we're giving away two Nexus tablets. Um, there's going to be two tracks that we have, a Race to Cordova Contribution and the Hybrid Mobile App Challenge. The Cordova Contribution Race is going to be like, um, or it will show you a link to our JIRA issues. And you can come in and try to close out some JIRA issues and do a pull request. And depending on how many you get pulled in or how complicated they are, that's how you would win that one. And then the hybrid mobile app challenge will be, you know, this is for beginners, so you can get your Hello World up and running. And then at the end of the day, we'll let you demo your application to the room, and the whole room can vote on which one they like the most. So we have um, a lot of Cordova committers in the room, and everyone's being awesome and helping out tomorrow. Can you raise your hand? Yeah, look at them all. We got half the room here. <laughs> so um, yeah, come try to stump us and ask questions about Cordova, and it'll be fun. That's it. Any questions? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I looked into doing Google Translate at some uh -huh. point, and, and there, were, there were actually problems that you can Google Translate, so I was curious if Microsoft has any licensing terms that Yeah, I have not looked into that, yeah. Um, is there any concern at all about um, you, have, you have folks who are doing translation? Is there any concern about giving them credit The ML, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we talked about that and what we could do to, to help give more rec recognition to that. Um, we, we do a blog entry every time there's a new release where we talk about all the things that have gone in, and we've thought about maybe putting like a shout out to some of the translators in there saying, you know, thanks, thanks to these people for translating in these different languages. So far, we haven't had a lot of people coming in and translating. Um, I wish it were more, but we, we've. Especially ones that work like a lot, right? Yeah, a lot of people sign up um, saying that they're willing to help, and then they don't come back again. Uh, like the nine languages that were suggested, some they'd pay me I add this language, and then they wouldn't actually help do the translation. So it's just sitting there. Um, so we probably should do some cleanup and remove some of those those languages. But yeah, we need to do a better job of calling out the. Contribution. Um, I, that I don't know the stats of. I know that um, we make sure that they are committers and have signed the CLA before I, I do all the polls. And uh, okay, so you're, uh -huh. you're having them sign the CLA. Yep, yep. So most of that conversation is offline with me, just managing it and talking to the people individually. A lot of people don't know the process, so they'll go in and try to do a change in GitHub on the specific language, and um, that's just not how we're doing it, because we're using this tool, so I have to go in and explain to them how our project works and how CrowdN works. Lots of manual stuff. Uh -huh. How long did it take like, a quick turnaround from like, the English change to uh, Unit Reason 5 or whatever to uh, uh, like the supply chain? 
Uh-huh. Yeah, so I try to, to run the script to make sure that the stuff within Crowden is as up to date as possible. So every week or so, I'll, I'll just go in and, and run it because it only takes about seven minutes to get the latest into Crowden. And then we wait for our translators to come in. And then when the email goes out that says, okay, we're ready to do the next release for Cordova, that's when I'll go in and, and check to see how far we are if we're at 90%. And then I'll do the machine translation and try to get us to that 100% so that we can have something to push out when the new release goes live. We have only touched on the, the documentation itself, um, not the actual coding, no. But there is a plugin for Cordova that is geolocation. So you could do something if you're, you're an application developer to do something, but yeah, we don't do any code. Right. Yeah. Um, what is that, Ruby? Uh, it's terrible. Yeah. Whatever you write it, don't ask that. Yeah. Yeah. It's called the Rocky. No one on the team knows how it works. Yeah. So my project doesn't use, I work on file packs primarily. My uh -huh. project doesn't use um, uh, Apache translation services, but I'm curious what led you to not use translate.apache.org? I didn't even know about it, so I, don't, I probably should have looked a little bit deeper into what Apache was doing, but yeah, I didn't know about it. So only whatever it's, it's part of, the context around that word, um, that, that whole thing. So the rest of the documentation will show up just fine, and then this one little area will now be marked as red. And then translators will see, you know, um, there's also a memory system within the Crowden tool, which is pretty neat. So it'll show you um, some similar translated words in the past. So it might show you that almost paragraph that you had with that one word that's different. So you can get an idea as a translator, oh, I already translated this in the past. So you click that, it auto fills it in, and then you can delete that one word that changed and change it. So. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yep. Yep, and that's what we found. I don't know if they do it now today with Markdown. Yeah, I gave them a good two weeks before it switched over. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna make you work, and I, it just wasn't as easy without it specifically. Did you talk to anyone from Ground Effects, or did you? Just yes, I did, and they said they had plans to support Markdown, but it wasn't there yet. And the support for both of those, Trans Effects and Crowden, has been awesome. Crowden, um, it's based outside the U.S., so their hours are a little off which made it weird for my work day, so I'd ask them questions and then get an answer to the next morning. But they were really very supportive of open source projects, and I think they have it written on their website now that they you know, are helping with Cordova. And every time I tweet something, they retweet it. Um, so the versioning is handled as part of our, our Git and our versioning of the regular project. So I don't have to worry about the crowd and tool itself doing versioning. So each time I, I do my push back into the, the, the master stream, um, it's marked with each version of the product. So it would go under in our, our edge and then be moved to each version as we move along.
Um, we never go back in in any of our releases and change documentation. Yeah, the, the Cordova in general doesn't really change a lot between releases. It's more like bug fixes each time. There isn't really any major changes in the, the code itself other than when we went to the... Yeah. So the documentation doesn't need to change much. Um, it's mostly when people add new features and yeah, this new little piece that you're translating. Uh -huh. The UV script magic, whatever happens to render things on the web, is that connected in any way to the CMS that you use to manage the website, or is this like a directory where you're basically running things? It's, it's its own thing. Uh, okay. It's basically in Joe Doc, I think, the documentation when it comes from that application. Yeah, yes. So, um, yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I've had a couple complaints about some things. Um, one Japanese guy, he approached me and said, you know, he was, t he was being paid by a, c a company in Japan to do translation for Cordova. And he said, um, I looked at your documentation that's mostly machine tra translated, and he's like, there's some, some you know, disconnects. I'm like, well, why don't you join the project as a translator and do it in my tool? Now you're sharing the wealth with everybody. And he's like, no, I'll lose my job. <laughs> Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't speak any other languages, so it's hard being the lead of something like this. Um, but hopefully our community will grow and we'll get more people involved to help. Um, the CQ website kind of growth trajectory look like for this? I mean, was it like you had 10 languages out of the gate? Did you start with like two? Uh-huh. Sure, yeah. Um, I started with Spanish and French because most of our um, people who are com committers on Cordova are in Canada and a lot of them speak French. So I was like, okay, I can get some of our Canadian people to come in and help do the translations and see if this will pick up. And then I added Spanish and it's so easy to add new languages. It's really just you click a button and it, a language pops up. So there's really no ha harm in having those 19 languages listed there even if we aren't doing Hebrew. You know, it's, it's there. Um, it doesn't actually get pulled into our site because it doesn't come close to reaching 100%. But if someone someday wanted to help translate, they would see that language there. All right, well, hopefully we'll see you guys all at the hackathon tomorrow. Spread the word. Tell everyone. Thanks, guys. <laughs>